do we need a decolonial, a decolonial political ecology? What is missing when, when we do not consider the colonial looking at the political ecology of today? Um, well, a lot is missing and it may not be very productive. The, the starting point of this uh, decolonial ecology is the realization that we have a, a deep fracture within uh, political ecology, but more broadly within different forms of uh, environmentalist and ecological movements. Uh, a fracture where on the one hand, people will question, tackle, think about uh, climate change issues, uh, environmental policies, even uh, social ecology, but then the proper issue of racism, of the legacy of slavery, the legacy of the colonial history of the world, may be a bit toned down and a bit left aside. This is one side of a fracture. And the other side of the fracture is a lot of people, people of color that, have, that are heavily uh, um, involved in anti-colonialism, anti-racism, uh, decolonial thoughts that would maybe diminish the importance of uh, environmental issues. And this fracture is seen in different spaces, uh, in conferences, in classrooms, but also uh, where we recognize that we go outside and there is diversity. Then we come to a classroom, we talk about ecology and the diversity is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just a question of diversity. It's, it's a question of also uh, the concepts, the, the the issues that are um, important to a lot of people that are poor, that are of color, that are suffering from racism. So the problem if we don't have a decolonial ecology is that we maintain a situation where we don't need to take into account the experiences of the people for whom the history of slavery and the history of colonization is not something that is long in the past. It's something that is still very present. Um, and what I did in my book is trying to highlight or point a different genealogy of the ecological thoughts. Many philosophers will refer mainly to uh, uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau or Henry David Thoreau, men, uh, white men in post in, uh, at the time in slavery societies, in colonial societies white men who pretend to be going around in uh, a so-called virgin nature, but it's not the virgin nature anyway. And my, my starting point is noting this. At the very same time in the 18th century or even the 19th century in, in America, at the very same time that these men were walking around by themselves and producing these important pieces of work, there were men, women, and children who were enslaved in the slave ship at the very same time. Uh, and they also had an idea of, of uh, or an experience or a con conceptualization of the world and of the earth. And it, it, it so happened that they could not avoid the political systems in order to uh, encounter the so-called nature. Their experiences of nature was already embedded in the experiences of colonization, of racism. And Starting from that, a different starting point, you can also see the kind of resistance that was put forth and the resistance that articulated, that put together both an opposition to the ecological destruction, the destruction, destruction created, for example, by the plantation. Uh, the plantation takes, it takes, it, it takes a, a diverse pieces of land forest cut it down and transform it into one or two different crops that will be exported. So this violent process, but also an opposition to, to racism, to, to the enslavement. One of the major figures that I take uh, my inspiration from are the enslaved fugitives, the so-called Maroons. And they really showed this both. Now, um, the, so the first point wanted to, was to highlight this other branch of political ecology, even if themselves would not necessarily call this ecology, but it is really uh, a really 
uh, important uh, opposition to these ecological destructions and political domination at the same time. The other problem, the thing that we miss if we don't have a decolonial ecology is that we perpetuate a space where people think of the, the earth globally, of the, of, of the world uh, entirely, and yet do so without the people that inhabit the earth. So what type of world can we imagine if only a few, uh, only one part of the world imagine this world? So um, the, the decolonial ecology is, is really a call to um, go beyond this fracture, bring people together and you know, have more weight into a, um, into a different world and have more weight against these capitalist uh, societies. Um, yeah, that's... Yeah.